Newport, Rhode Island. The casino on Bellevue Avenue, home of the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Walk through these halls and trace the history of tennis. And today, the class of 2006 arrives. Two-time U.S. Open champion Patrick Rafter, who dominated men's tennis in the late 90s with his explosive serve and volley game. Gabriella Sabatini, whose style and grace came out of South America to light up the women's tennis game. And legendary Italian journalist Gianni Clarici, whose in-depth coverage of tennis has spanned decades. The induction, next. are looking at center court, Bill Talbert center court to be exact, at the International Tennis Hall of Fame. We are just about ready for the induction ceremonies and traditionally every year on Saturday, the players who are inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame stride out onto this beautiful center court. And today will be no exception. We have three of the finest personalities in the game, Patrick Rafter, Gabriella Sabatini, and the great journalist from Italy, Gianni Clarici. They will all be receiving their plaques before too long, and we'll be covering it for you right here on the Tennis Channel, live high above this great ground. Well, there are some categories, actually, and certainly as we look at the recent player category, it's Patrick Rafter and Gabriella Sabatini. There are seven players that will be inducted today posthumously. Those are master player categories. And then a contributor down at the bottom, Gianni Clarici. So that's a list of everybody who is going to be inducted into the Tennis Hall of Fame today. Tony Trabert, the president of the International Tennis Hall of Fame, will be presiding down on center court. We'll be going to Tony shortly. But again, it's a great day if you think about what goes on here through the years at the Newport Casino. Certainly uh, some absolutely interesting criteria. The, these, this is the absolute uh, eligibility of the master players. You have to be a competitor retired for at least 20 years, a distinguished career obviously, and most importantly you have to receive at least three quarters of the votes of the committee. And these are recent players like Patrick Rafter and Sabatini. They have played over the last 20 years, currently not competing on either the ATP or the WTA Tour, and certainly consideration of integrity, sportsmanship, and character important. And the contributor category, which is Gianni Clarici, have to contribute it obviously in many, many ways. Candidates do not need to retire from the sport. In fact, Clarici is still very active. And again, that very tough criteria of 75% or higher. Stay with us. Suzanne Longlon in the Hall of Fame, the great J. Donald Budge. We'll have it for you when we return on the Tennis Channel. Inductions next. slam and uh, you know but I honestly didn't think I was ever going to win one at, at one stage. i have gone through a couple of rough years and I just thought I'd just float around the 20, if I can get 20, 30 in the world that'll be fine. Things just took a whole different role and, and, and I can sort of teach people about that who are in that same position. The great Australian Patrick Rafter, what a magnificent player he was in the late 90s coming out of Mount Isa of all places, a sheep shearing little town in Queensland, and he strides onto this beautiful center court. Gabriella Sabatini, talk about style and grace. She had it all. One of the fine women athletes in the game. And Steffi Groff, right there behind her, will be introducing her today. What a nice gesture that is for her longtime doubles partner. Gabriella Sabatini, ready to be inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame. 
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the International Gorgeous Day on Center Court. We should mention this is the Center Court at the Newport Casino, now called the Bill Talbert Center Court. And a lot of the dignitaries there, again, that's Patrick Rafter, who will be introduced by his father. Ladies and gentlemen, the Artillery Company of Newport. They bring on the traditional old Ladies artillery company out of Newport, Rhode Island. Looks like ceremonies. we're back in the uh, Revolutionary the War days. It's a real throwback here for those of you who have never been to the Hall of Famer, Hall of Fame. Tony a wonderful Trabert. place to be. And now Tony Trabert, the president of the International Tennis Hall of Fame, has been introduced. Let's go to Tony. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the International Tennis Hall of Fame here at Historic Newport Casino. This weekend, we honor an incredible achievements of our 2006 enshrinement class. In 1881, the Newport Casino hosted the first United States National Tennis Championships, now known as the U.S. Open. In 1954, through the hard work of Candy and Jimmy Van Allen, the USTA sanctioned this beautiful place as the National Lawn Tennis Hall of Fame. Starting in 1977, Individuals from the worldwide tennis community became eligible for induction in the International Tennis Hall of Fame. On this hallowed ground, we will honor 10 very talented individuals who exemplify the greatest traditions of our sport. Athleticism, sportsmanship, passion, and perseverance. Their accomplishments both on and off the tennis courts are the reason why we are honoring them here today. There are some very special guests seated here on the Bill Talbert Stadium Court who have come from near and far to help us salute our 2006 induction class. It's my pleasure to introduce them. First, families and friends. They have seen them at their best and at their worst. They've supported, encouraged, and loved them no matter what. They have come here today to be a part of this special celebration and I would first like to ask the families of our inductees to please stand and be recognized. Thank you for being here. Now seated to my left are a group of individuals who through their tireless, I'm sorry, I should go back a step, I beg your pardon. We now ask the friends of our inductees to please rise and be recognized. The friends, please stand. Thank you also for being here with us today. Seated on my left are a group of individuals who through their tireless dedication and leadership have helped the International Tennis Hall of Fame grow into the marvelous institution that it is today. Their commitment to the preservation of the sport of tennis, both past and present, is unparalleled. We have grown and flourished through the years because of their support and guidance. To say thank you to these individuals is an understatement. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the Executive Committee of the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Thank you very much for all you do for us. Seated directly behind me is our official party. We are very privileged to have with us today Dennis Richardson, the Ambassador of Australia. The next gentleman I'd like to recognize is the Chairman of the International Tennis Hall of Fame, Mr. Wick Simmons. Wick. We're also happy to have some Hall of Famers with us today. 1970, 71 inductee Vixatius. Nineteen eighty-seven Hall of Famer Stan Smith. Two thousand and five inductee Butch Buckholtz. 1990 Hall of Famer Jan Kodish.
inducted in 2002, Pam Shriver. In 1994 inductee, the very colorful Bud Collins. And finally, our 2004 Hall of Famer, Steffi Groff. For over 50 years, the International Tennis Hall of Fame has preserved the history of our great sport and continues to honor the legacies of the individuals who embody its traditions. Today, we are posthumously inducting seven extraordinary master players who helped shape the history of this wonderful sport. The playing careers of these great tennis greats range from the late 1800s through the early 1950s, with the majority of their careers ending prior to World War II. First, I'd like to recognize and honor Australian Nancy Wynne Bolton. Nancy has a remarkable distinction of capturing 20 Australian championship titles. She was ranked in the world top 10 four times. Next master player honoree is Marion Jones Farquhar. Marion was the first American woman to compete at Wimbledon and at the Olympics in 1900. She also won four US championship titles and was a finalist twice. Next, we honor Britain's Arthur Gore, who holds the record for the most Wimbledon tournaments played winning three times. His Wimbledon tennis playing career spanned from 1888 through 1922, and he still holds the record for the oldest male champion. We'd also like to honor Carl Kozilou, a Czechoslovakian pro champion who reigned as the French champion from 1925 to 1930, and again in 1932. Our next inductee is Wimbledon champion Herbert Lawford, who was the first person to introduce topspin into our sport. And we also have France's finest female champion, Simone Mathieu. Aside from two French championship singles titles, she also holds 11 major doubles titles. She was ranked in the world top 10 for 11 straight years. And our final master player honoree is Hans Nusslein of Germany, who captured four world pro championship titles from 1933 to 1938. We'll be right back with more from the International Tennis Hall of Fame induction ceremony presented by Campbell's. That will be the US Open, winning the US Open in 1990. Yeah, that was just the best. Uh, it was a great moment. That was my only Grand Slam, and playing in New York, which was one of my favorite cities to play, and um, playing against Steffi, the finals. I mean, everything was there. And just I, the feeling that I had when I won that tournament was, was just not comparable to, to anything else, you know. It was, it was very nice. To introduce Johnny today is his longtime friend and fellow broadcaster. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Hall of Famer Bud Collins. Thank you, Tony. And thank you all for being here. This is a day in which we all share something 
precious, our love of this game of tennis. So we're so glad to have you here. And no one, I think, loves it any more than Johnny Clarici, who comes from Como, that beautiful city on the lake. Johnny and I are scribblers and babblers. We write and we telecast and we do some radio. Why? Well, if not, nobody would hear about the great champions we have here. So we fear, feel that that is something worthwhile. Johnny and I have known each other for 40 years. He was singing the Italian national anthem. I was stunned. I didn't think he knew the words. He only knew a few of them. He's been working for La Repubblica, the top newspaper in Italy, for more than 30 years. He's telecasted on various European networks. He has written the definitive book on the history of tennis, 500 Years of Tennis, which has been translated in at least eight or nine languages. He has a feeling for the game, which shows in his writing. I don't read much Italian, but sometimes someone will point it out to me and say, look at that. And I'll say, how could he get that in the paper? And he says, well, I live in a free country, don't you? He is a little bit outrageous in his writing and his telecasting, but that's what gives him that flair, that pepper that his readers and his listeners enjoy. The mark of a good reporter is how many times you've been sued. Johnny's been sued a lot, but he's won every case, so he's still in the business. He has been a good enough player to have played Wimbledon and the Italian championships. He was nearly on the Italian Davis Cup team, so I consider him a renaissance man of tennis. He's a poet, a novelist, and I think a songwriter, but he did win one year the Playwright of the Year Award in Italy. So I'm very proud and privileged to introduce to you Giovanni Emilio Clerici. Well, he didn't say to you that he's my public relations agent. <laughs> well, beside that, I wrote a few lines, because if not, I get too emotional. I wrote a few lines of my speech. Non plus ultra gentes ave, veni ut premium recipien. Telling that, I saw some perplexity about the people who gentle came here because I was pl I planned to make a speech in Latin. <laughs> so this perhaps would suit me when they sanctify me in the Vatican, but not today. <laughs> and speaking about the mysterious region why I've been inducted, I told a friend of mine that don't induct me in the Hall of Fame in the States and he said, how comes that only one of your book is translated in the States in English? And I said, well, perhaps because if all the others 15 were translated, I wouldn't get me there. So uh, what I can say more, I felt today that if I have to represent somebody, in front of this incredible group of real champions and tennis players is because perhaps I could represent the loser. Because there is no winner without losers. And the losers are not there, they're all winners. So, I mean, I say to myself, Clerici, I take you there because you are the greatest loser ever seen in the history. Yes, because uh, in between uh, two Roland Garros and two Wimbledon, I never won a single match. <laughs> and then I think it's a good, good reason for my award. There is more, Johnny. 
We have for you a Hall of Fame jacket. Will you take that cheap rag off and put this on, please? It's, uh, Gianni Clarici, what a colorful guy, a wonderful young man who is a great journalist. And coming up, Patrick Rafter. We'll hear from him when we come back. Stay with us. Stroll through the halls of the International Tennis Hall of Fame. What a day here. It's Induction Saturday. Earlier, we had a chance to talk to Patrick Rafter, and we asked him about this special day. I, I guess I have to go back to describe how yesterday was. It was something really unexpected, actually. I, I didn't see that sort of um, emotion, I suppose. In, in the whole ceremony, I just thought we'd come here, have a good time, and do the speech, and just make sure you get through it without blowing it. And um, but it all sort of took on a whole different role when I got out there and involved with it, and got what it was all about. Um, and the whole functions they put on around it's actually a really special day, or two days of it. Um, so uh, it'll probably sink in later when you sort of time to reflect. But yesterday was it was just incredibly emotional. To introduce Pat today is a gentleman who has been a constant source of love and encouragement throughout his life. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Pat's father, Jim Rafter. Our anthem is a little more somber than that of the Italians, and I'm... <laughs> I'm afraid this may be a little more sombre too. I'm here to represent John Newcomb, and as such I'll read the words that he penned. It was, actually it's John Newcomb and Tony Roach. It was our honour to be inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame in 1986. We were brought up in the 50s, an era that brought on 25 years of great Australian champions. He's never short of giving himself a rap, John. <laughs> For whatever reasons, we were the last of that particular era, but a tradition had been established of Aussie tennis champions being tough warriors who never said die and played the game hard but fair. In our book and in the opinion of other Aussie champions like Rosewall, Laver, Fraser, Cooper, Anderson, Emerson, Sedgman, Stolly, that's about it, I think, Pat Rafter fits the mould. All of us have been proud to have Pat representing our traditions and history in the world of tennis. When we took over captain coach role of the Australian Davis Cup team in 94, there were a number of young players we had to train into the rigours of Davis Cup competition and what it means to represent your country. Young men who have the potential to be champions can be made or broken under the pressure of Davis Cup play, whether it be the expectations of playing at home or sometimes hostile environments experienced in other countries never in the States. From being 20 in the world in December 94, two years um, later after Pat's wrist surgery, he was 63 and seriously doubting if he could make it to the top. It had been a turbulent two years for Pat as he battled the expectations of the Australian public starved for another world tennis champion. In February 97, in a thrilling five-set Davis Cup win over Cedric Pialine at Sydney's historic White City, Pat rediscovered that ball of fire down inside him that we call his warrior mentality. Eight months later, he was the US Open champion and on his way to becoming one of the world's best tennis players. It's one thing to become a champion tennis player. The real test, however, is how you conduct yourself when you reach the top. Pat won his first US Open 
Well, I probably we should have said, when Pat won his first US Open, his first words to us, even before the presentation, were, I want to donate my prize money to the Starlight Foundation of Australia, a charity that grants wishes to chronically ill children. Could have given it to his old man. <laughs> a Starlight Express room in the Brisbane Martyr Hospital carries Pat's name today. And he has continued that work through the formation of his own charity, the Patrick Graff, the Cherish the Children Foundation. These are, again, Newcomb Roach's words. Pat, we are proud of you. We are proud of the way you have represented that great game of tennis your country and your family. We are proud to have played a small part in your climb to the mountaintop and we are proud to call you our friend. If I could just add a few words from Mum and Dad, something that's sure to embarrass Pat. <coughs> Patrick, above all else, what endears you so much to us is the man that you are. The respect you give to all great and small the dignity and integrity which you played the game and how you now live your life. As a family, we all followed your progress and shared your highs and lows. And Patrick, as your mother so aptly puts it, thank you for taking us on such a wonderful journey, culminating in this great day today. Uh, first of all, I have to um, I thank, well, first of all, I thank my father. Very nice speech. Thanks, Dad. I'm going to apologise to people I'm going to have my back to. Um, I would turn around, but it's not set up that way. In my career, there's a few milestones that I really wanted to achieve. It was to be the top ten player, to be a number one player, to win a Grand Slam or two. Would have loved to have had a Davis Cup and a Wimbledon as well. But some things came true and some of them didn't. And there's also a small part of me that wanted to be recognised for what I had achieved in tennis and be talked about in the tennis world. Tennis is a great game with a lot of great things going for it. We get to hold the future, future in our own hands. Through hard work and dedication, we can create our own success. But to be acknowledged by your peers in the hierarchy of the game of tennis is somewhat out of your control. Some of the most exciting things that have ever happened in my tennis career and also in my life. So in my life. I'd like to say thank you very much for all those who voted for me and it's a very special day for me. Thank you. There are many steps on the way to becoming a professional tennis player and Newport was a stage for me back in 1993 where I beat the local wildcard entrant Lou Gloria here uh, for my first ever ATP win. That gave me the confidence and belief that I belonged on tour. Unfortunately for me, I never went on to achieve any, great any other great results here in Newport. But it's a place I love coming back to, and it's a great place to be here again. My love of tennis started when I was a little fella, growing up in the mining town of Mount Isa in, in far northwestern Queensland. I was part of a large family, and I used to always want to do what my older brothers and sisters were doing, so that was going down to the local tennis club. I remember watching one of my older brothers play and that's when I learnt to clap, when to clap and when not to clap for my mother. And uh, I'd say, Mum, can I clap that? She said, no, that's in the bottom of the net. You probably shouldn't clap that. <laughs> but this led to a fascination with the game, which led to fun, which led to a challenge, which led to hard work with huge adrenaline rushes, which led to the ultimate, a dream come true. A dream come true feels like such a cliche to say, but it's very hard to describe it especially when you try to inspire young children, or old kids for that matter. 
I don't actually remember ever dreaming about the game of tennis, but I thought about it every single day of my life. So be careful what you think out there. As every person who has lived their lives and achieved their goals, there are people around them that without their help, you'd have to wonder if you could have done it at all. Many people in my life have somehow contributed to my success, whether it was their undying support through good and bad times, or even those nasty ones who left you out in the cold. Those nasty ones actually can provide an amazing amount of power if harnessed in the wrong way, so I'd like to thank them. They gave me inspiration to prove them wrong. I'd like to thank those who also gave me the most precious gift of all, and that was love. To mum and dad, you are the reason I am the person I am today. and the backbone of what I achieved in the past. You gave me all the love and support at the right times and criticism and direction when I needed it. To my eight brothers and sisters, who probably sacrificed the most out of all of them, and they had to give up their mother in a time probably when they needed them most for months and months on end while she travelled around and helped me with my career. And on top of that, I had to put up my father's cooking. <laughs> this is probably a favour I can never repay, but try to acknowledge them whenever I get the chance. I had many coaches help shape my game from my mishit forehands over the back fence to my serve and volley game. My brother Jeff gave me perspective in a, in a world that sometimes has very little. To John Newcomb and especially Tony Roach, they gave me direction and, and showed me the way. A bit like that foghorn we heard this morning at 5am, trying to lead his boats into shore woke me up. My friends have travelled from Australia, Bermuda and America. Thanks very much for joining me in this celebration. My life is now of a family man who still loves and my wife will say lives for his sport. A new chapter has begun which involves a lot of dirty nappies, a bit of golf, a lot of surfing, a bit of yoga and plenty of quality time with the family. My love for my wife and my two children is the centre of my life and, and will continue for the rest of my life. To Lara, thank you for putting up with me on tour and in life. You got to see the real happenings of the pressures and trappings of a sportsman and now you get to see a retired sportsman, competitive nature with our children. Thank you for being my wife, a fantastic mother and my loving and loyal friend. Thank you. Congratulations. It's an honor to give you this Hall of Fame jacket. Coming up, the glamorous and talented Gabriella Sabatini. We'll hear from her when we return to the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Tony Trabert at center court now just about ready to introduce one of the all time great women players who will be introducing Gabriella Sabatini joining on center court a Hall of Famer herself Steffi Groff earlier we had a chance to talk to Gabriella Sabatini and asked her about this special day it's a great honor I'm, I'm so excited I think it's the uh, the best way to end up my career um, you know to, to finish this cycle and yeah, it's a great honor to be part of the tennis history. Guillermo was here a few years ago and, and now it's me and, and I cannot believe it. You know, sometimes I, I think about it and it's, it's, it's just amazing. I mean, I, 
I, I know I appreciate it now, but I, I know I will appreciate it even more, you know, uh, as, as the years pass by. Yeah. More from the International Tennis Hall of Fame induction ceremony presented by Campbell's right after this. Barry McKay, back with you at the International Tennis Hall of Fame induction ceremony presented by Campbell's. To introduce Gabby today is a player whose astounding tennis career was punctuated by her 1988 Golden Grand Slam when she won all four Grand Slams as well as the gold medal at the Seoul Olympics. She is the only player, male or female, to win all four majors at least four times. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Hall of Famer Steffi Groff. to start off my speech, so I'm doing a little better here, but um, yeah, it is a deep, deep honor for me to be back here in Newport. Two years ago, I had the joy of joining this special body of people that I respect so much, and now today, I've been asked to introduce someone very, very special to me. The memories that I treasure and the admiration that wells up in me now have been building for over 20 years, and now I'll try to put into words how deeply important Gabby has been to tennis and to me. Anyone who's looked across the net and seen Gabby's athleticism, her lively presence on the court, and the way she electrified the game, knows that the lame, her name belongs among the leads of tennis. Now the International Tennis Hall of Fame will enshrine forever the name of Gabriella Sabatini with a rich, lasting legacy for generations to come. Far into the future, people will now be reminded what we know so well today, that to be athletic, graceful, honest, and loyal can be all summed up in one name, Gabby. I watched over so many years on the tour how she earned a one-of-a-kind army of fans. She developed a one-of-a-kind style and possessed a one-of-a-kind ability to represent her beautiful country for the whole world to admire. From distant parts of the world, our two lives came together and challenged the deepest part of, it, of each other. Many of our greatest moments of our careers came about simply playing against each other or playing with each other. We learned to speak each other the universal language of competition. It wasn't easy. Long before we learned to speak our common language of English. From the very beginning, with our first match we played, we were 12 years old. We found each other not only a rivalry, but a deep bond, a bond of respect and friendship that I value to this day. Her willingness to pay the deepest price of commitment is a beautiful gift for everybody who, who celebrates tennis. I've watched as her life has resonated around the world. She has impacted the lives of so many children, especially in her home country, Argentina. And she continues to give of herself to impact people in need throughout the world. And today, as we recognize the great impact on tennis, I'm grateful to say the greatest impact you've made is on me. Thank you. Gabby.
Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Steffi, for the interaction. <clears throat> that, was, that was very nice, all your words. Um, I value very much your presence here today. <clears throat> you have been a, a very important person in my career. The, the matches that we played were challenging physically and mentally and very memorable. Um, all of us know that you are one of the greatest athletes of the world, but I can say that in the many years that I have known you, it is your qualities as a person that I, uh, that I admire the most. <laughs> Truly, you have made me a better player and a better person. I thank you for that. I would like to thank the, uh, <clears throat> all the committee members of the Hall of Fame for this induction. It is a great honor f for me to be here today and be a part of uh, tennis history. It is my first time here, and I can say that I've been enjoying every moment, and I thank you for making me feel very comfortable. Seeing the, the museum and all the legends and the players that, that are there, and, and now it's me who is going to be there. It's just um, something that, that I will treasure all my life. I want to congratulate Patrick and Gianni for their induction. Uh, it is a great honor to be at your presence today. Um, I wanted to say these words today. Um, my love for tennis began the moment I picked up the racket at the age of six. It became the only thing I wanted to do. I was too young to think of the future or set any goals. I focused only on how much joy there was when I had a racket in my hand. The journey began here, but moved quickly when I started to play tournaments. I was a very introverted person I was, and wasn't easy for me to relate to others. Tennis has exposed me to so many things in such a positive way that perhaps I wouldn't have experienced if it wasn't through tennis. Today, I am convinced that tennis is not only a sport. It is giving you the opportunity to open your mind, to travel all over the world, to get to know people and relate to others, to have a commitment and responsibility to grow and mature at, at an early age, to face and overcome obstacles, all of which I can apply in my everyday life. All of these things have made me the person that I am today. That's why I am so grateful to this sport. I would like to thank my family, <laughs> my, my parents and my brother for uh, their support. Um, today I can appreciate and I admire the way that you navigated my career. Thank you for that. I also want to thank um, uh, my group work of people, uh, my coaches, physical trainers, agents. Um, thank you for, for guiding me and riding with me throughout this journey. I also want to thank my friends for always being there for me. I recognize that even though this is an individual sport, it takes a group to succeed. Um, and last, I want to thank the fans for their support and for giving me inspiration and the motivation to play a sport that I love so much. I believe that I have been a very fortunate person to have traveled on this road. Thank you very much. Gabby, before I give you this jacket and certificate, 
Your dad told me he doesn't understand English too well. Why don't you thank your parents in Spanish? I, I hope I don't cry. <laughs> bueno, eh, nada, les quiero agradecer eh, a ustedes por, por todo el apoyo que me han dado durante toda mi carrera. Eh, decirles que realmente aprecio hoy y admiro la forma en que han manejado mi carrera porque sé que no, es algo que no es muy fácil de hacer y, y lo, han, lo han hecho de muy bien. Y, y bueno, entonces quiero, quiero agradecerles por todo lo que hicieron, por estar conmigo siempre. ¡Feliz cumpleaños! Back with more at the International Tennis Hall of Fame Induction Ceremony, presented by Campbell's. that you know I that I contribute to tennis you know that I, I that I left something in, in tennis you know I, it's, it's something that I don't think much you know um, how do I want people to remember me but uh, I think that is something that I would like you know that I that I contribute I did something you know uh, for for tennis you know uh, something positive for for tennis I just like for me, no one likes to be disliked, um, so you go about your way of trying to um, be as nice as you can and put in time because they give, they give you obviously a lot back in return. Um, I, I think just approachable, um, someone who tried to play the game fair um, and then played okay. What a beautiful day at Bill Talbert Center Court. The induction ceremonies wrapping up now as three of the uh, fine tennis personalities in this hand for Patrick Graffer, certainly a big one here today. And uh, this crowd enthralled by these three people. A great moment when Steffi Groff introduced uh, Gabriella Sabatini, obviously Patrick Graffer's father, very excited. And Gianni Clarici, who I've known for many years, one of the most colorful writers in the game of tennis and deservedly being inducted today into the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Well, Bud Collins knows uh, Gianni Clarici very well. And Bud, of course, has been around these grounds for many, many years. And uh, as it turns out, Bud Collins had a chance to roll through the International Tennis Hall of Fame with one of the greats, Patrick Rafter. Let's have a look at that journey in the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Patrick Michael Rafter, Mount Isa to Newport, Rhode Island. Did you ever think this was going to happen? Oh, back then, I don't know what I was thinking. I probably wasn't thinking about these sort of things, but... I remember the first time I came here in '93. Um, now this is a place where there was a lot of lot of uh, historical value here for tennis. And I was also, as, as a kid, I was also saw always names at different tournaments of you know Laver, Rosewall, Newcomb, and thought I want to get my name up on these boards as well. And this is another place I want to be part of this. Well, you got your name on a lot of boards with those Aussies. Here's a racket. You won 1998 the U.S. Open. It says on the case that I gave it to the Hall of Fame. I don't remember it, but you gave it to me and I passed it on. Do you remember that final? Um, uh, the non I actually remember the final, but I don't actually remember giving you the racket. Maybe I, I stole it out of your bag. <laughs> <laughs> Probably happened, mate. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that final was an interesting one. Um, I'd never been so relaxed before, a, a big final match before. Just went out there, played Mark Philippus's 98 US Open final. And everything just came together. Well. Everything worked, didn't it? Yeah, I think Mark was a bit flat from the five set he had the day before. and. I had one as well, but I came off feeling really good. Oh, it was kind of tough for Australia to have two. And who are they going to barrack for? Yeah, it was not as if we had 
30 guys inside the top 100 either. So oh. whenever we had a final, you always you know, wish it was sort of apart from each other. And, you, and there was always... But I guess the, the positive side of that was that one Aussie was going to win the US Open. That's right. You couldn't lose. What size are these shoes? Oh, probably 11, I would say. 11, maybe. because yeah. we need to find a young Australian to fit in these shoes. Well, that's, that's a problem, I suppose. It's been a bit quiet for a while, but with Leighton, um, there's, there's got to be Leighton some... Hewitt, yeah. Yeah, with Leighton Hewitt, there's got to be... Uh, you know, some guys watching this and saying, I want to be like Leighton as well. And there's, a, there's one or two young kids coming through right now, which we, um, which we really hope to be good players. Well, that's good. As you, when you were a kid, who were the Aussies you admired? At that time, it was uh, Cashy, actually. But I, I grew Cash. up. Yeah, I grew up with the rivalry of uh, Beyond Borg and John McEnroe, and I, um, I love both of them in their different times. When Borg gave up, then I loved McEnroe. And, yeah. And then I love Cashy, um, and that's who I sort of followed a lot Did of. it go back? Now look over here. These are some great Australian names with you, and I think probably you're having a beer or two. <laughs> John Newcomb, your Davis Cup captain, Tony Roach, the Davis Cup coach, and Kenny Rosewall, who was the longest standing champion of all. Uh, yeah. You're having a pretty good time with these guys? See, they're, they're things that, uh, these guys obviously been before my time, and uh, you don't actually, you can't believe that you're actually going to be hanging out with them and doing these sort of things. And not only were they great players, but they were really great blokes, and that's the most important part of it. And they made you feel part of the club. And um, there was no um, ego there involved, and, and we all just fit in really well. And so you all are now members of the International Tennis Hall of Fame. <laughs> thank you, Patrick. Oh, thank you, bud. And so Patrick Rafter, Gabriella Sabatini, and Gianni Clarici are inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame. A huge hand for these two bright players, certainly two of the most attractive players to play the game of tennis over the last 20 years. Rafter, who burst on the scene, won two U.S. Opens in the late 90s, and Gabriella Sabatini, who collected so many great championships through the years. It has been a magnificent induction ceremony today all around the grounds of this great hallowed ground here at the International Tennis Hall of Fame. The Bill Talbert Center Court has been the setting. A gorgeous day for induction ceremonies and we have been glad to be a part of it on the Tennis Channel. And so, for our entire crew on the Tennis Channel, for all of us here from Newport, so long everybody.